Today, we're gonna to talk about nursing pharmacology and socks. When I ask nursing students, what's your biggest struggle in nursing school? 67% say pharmacology. There's over 400,000 adverse drug events every year in hospitals. But don't worry, today I'm going to show you a simple four-step process for mastering medications. What's up guys, I'm Thor. I'm mean, John Haas, RN, founder of InterSMG, and today I'm going to teach you the SOC method for mastering nursing pharmacology. The NRSNG SOC method is a four-step process, S-O-C-K, and stands for side effects, organs, cards, classes, considerations, and must know. The SOC method will give you a simple framework you can follow over and over. And hang on to the end of this video and I'm going to give you the exact same drug card template that I used to learn medications while in nursing school and on the ICU floor. Let's look at each step individually. First, S. S stands for side effects. You can't remember the myriad side effects that your patient might encounter for a given medication. Instead, focus on learning life-threatening side effects that impact major organs and contradict therapy. One key to learning side effects is to understand very well what the intention of the medication is in the first place. Some side effects are going to be the opposite effect you were trying to achieve. For example, a patient with hypothyroidism might experience a thyroid storm while receiving thyroid replacement therapy. It's possible to get stuck trying to remember 4,348 side effects of Tylenol. However, that is not a realistic goal. Instead, focus on the handful of key side effects. Alrighty, let's move on to step number two of the SOC method, O. O is for organs. As you study medications, you should focus on major organ systems when it comes to side effects and considerations. This all goes back to the ABCs that we learned from day one in nursing school. For example, giving a CNS depressant for pain is fine, but you must understand how that's going to impact the heart and the respiratory drive, because we kind of need those to live. Other side effects, while important, take a back seat to the ABCs. In general, I recommend the following organ system hierarchy when learning medications, side effects, and considerations. Start with cardiac, then respiratory, neuro, renal, GIGU, integumentary, and lastly, musculoskeletal. This keeps you focused on the ABCs. If you forget that steroids cause soggy bones or osteoporosis, that is far less detrimental to your patient than forgetting that it will raise blood sugars or depress the immune system. With that in mind, let's move on to C, which stands for classes, considerations, and cards. First, let's talk about classes. Medications are classified in two ways. They're classified how the medication works and how the medication helps, okay? The pharmacological class is how the medication works. The therapeutic class is how the medication helps. As an example, let's look at cimetidine or tagamint. The pharmacological class for cimetidine is how it works. It's a histamine H2 antagonist. The therapeutic class is how it helps. It's an anti-ulcer. At InterSNG, we recommend learning pharmacological classes when learning pharm for three reasons. First, this goes hand in hand with learning anatomy and physiology and focusing on the organs. If you understand the A and P and then focus on pharmacological class, everything starts coming together much better. Second, as you understand how the body works and how the medications work within the body to alter physiology, things start to click much faster. Third, and most importantly, generic medication names are based on pharmacological classes. If you know that H2 antagonists end in IDINE or IDENE, as soon as you see an IDINE medication on a test, a MAR or elsewhere, you know exactly what it does. On the other hand, not all anti-ulcer, therapeutic class, meds end in IDINE. Now let's talk about considerations. When learning a new medication, it is important to look at and remember the nursing considerations. These include things like administration concerns, patient education, and other vital information. Some things that might be included in here would be things like how slow to administer Zofran, or how fast to administer adenosine, maybe pregnancy categories, telling a patient not to eat grapefruit with a medication, you get it. Again, you are looking for considerations that could be detrimental to the patient or will allow them to administer themselves or interfere with our intended results. 
Let me pause here really quick to say, as a nurse, you are the one right there with your patient administering or teaching the patient how to administer the medication. A prescription does not mean you must give a medication. Be a clinician. By this, I mean you must use your nursing judgment. You are the eyes and the ears for the medical team. You are the one at the bedside. Okay, now let's talk about the last C, which is cards. Let me just start by saying you're gonna hate this method, but will you just try it once for me because I promise it'll help. Repetition is king when it comes to learning new information. Learning nursing pharmacology is no exception. If you were to ask me, what is the one thing I can do to learn nursing pharmacology? My two word answer to you would be drug cards. Make them, throw them away, make them again, and repeat. Working through the SOC method, you've already identified the drugs that you need to know, the things that you need to know about those drugs. Now it's time to start reviewing those medications over and over and over and over. You get the point. Here's what you need to do. Armed with your list of must-know drugs, which we'll talk about in a minute, start working through the NRSNG drug card template. Click below to get it for free. And you do this for each and every drug on your list. Print out as many copies as you need, please. Create a binder with as many templates as you have drugs on your list. Organize these drug card templates by generic name. Once you've created a drug card for each drug, start redoing cards for the ones you are using most often. I know what you're thinking. John, you're insane. I already don't have enough time to study, let alone create 6,435,689 drug cards. But listen, spending time studying what really matters saves you time in the end. Your knowledge of important information grows and you become a more focused nurse. Phew, you guys hanging in there? We're almost done. You're just one step away from being a med master. The last step in the SOC method is must know. Get it? K for no. Early on in my career as a nursing student, I began to notice some patterns. Some meds are given and tested on far more than others. Well, why is that? Is that we just don't give a damn about patients who are taking abaloperatide injections? Well, of course not. When it comes down to it, some medications are just far more common, taken by more patients in more situations, and therefore more important to know and be aware of. Did you know the FDA, as of 2014, had approved nearly 1,500 drugs? If it were possible to know each of those drugs intimately, you'd be the most amazing pharmacist in the world. Newsflash, it's not possible. So here's what we've done for you here at NRSNG. We've outlined the most commonly tested medications. We've cross-referenced that list with the most commonly prescribed medications. You can view our list of 149 must-know meds in our nursing pharmacology course inside NRSNG Academy. In fact, you can view that list right now for free if you click the description below or the link in this video. Once you get a job in a specialty area after school, you should start adding to this list. For example, I started working in the neuro ICU. You should add to the list the most common and unique medications prescribed on your unit. You should begin making the same list right now. When you're on clinical floor, keep a note of all the medications you're giving. As you begin to notice week after week that you keep giving heparin, insulin, protonics, and others, make a note of those medications. These are the medications and pharmacological classes that you need to know well. This method is known as the 80-20 principle. You're gonna give 20% of those medications 80% of the time. And of those 20% that you give, you're gonna administer just 20% of those 80% of the time. You see how it works. It's about focusing your priorities on those things that are most important. While you could try to learn every medication, it's just not possible. Focus your attention on learning those that you must know as deeply as possible. Wow, so that's the SOC method for learning nursing pharmacology. You might feel overwhelmed right now, but you can do this. At NRSNG, we've created the number one most complete pharmacology course on the planet, covering not only the SOC method, but 150 plus medications, math for meds, including dimensional analysis, and over 25 nursing cheat sheets. Get started at nrsng.com or just click the link below in the description. The world needs more nurses and you can do this.
I forgot I was going to say that. That was just serendipitous, y'all. Like we always say here at NRSNG, happy nursing.